Okay, and let me share my screen. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining. I'm thrilled to have some folks here with me today. And we are going to take a dive into Canvas Studio. Um, and there are a few things I wanna talk about before we get started. And I will actually take some time to um, get into Canvas Studio and do some how-to and showcase some of the um, tools that are in Studio. But first I want to, of course, I always have to start um, with a little background information um, to help you guys make sense of how this all fits in with what we're doing here in teaching and learning. So um, I talk about this often. So if you've been at any of my webinars in the past, you know that I'm a big advocate for making sure we are building in interaction within our classes. So when we're thinking about a face-to-face -face classroom, the um, interaction is more natural. When we're in an online environment, we need to be a little bit more um, purposeful in building in that interaction. So I've done a lot of reading on interaction and engagement when it comes to teaching and learning. And uh, this is a very common uh, framework for student interaction. There's typically three domains that we look at. Some have four domains, and I'll tell you what that fourth is, you might be able to guess, but most frameworks talk about student to student interaction, student to content interaction, and student to teacher interaction. And newer models have a fourth element, and that's student to, any guesses? I'm gonna pause here and look at the chat and see if you guys could maybe guess what a fourth interaction piece might be. No guesses? Very good, Melissa. Very good. Student to technology. Um, that is a fourth domain of student interaction that some of the models have built in. And there's um, quite a bit of discussion on that in, in some of our newer uh, literature. But um, when we talk about interaction, um, specifically in the online environment, um, you play a big part in the student learning experience. You are unique and you can offer our students a unique learning experience. You have your own face, your own voice, your own personality, your own experience and your own expertise. And um, Studio can help you bring that um, all of those things into the classroom and really build out that um, student to teacher domain of student interaction. Um, you know, we, we build the courses in the Center for Learning and Innovation, and we build in student to student interaction opportunities and, of course, student to content. Um, opportunities, but you really bring that third piece, which is really critical. So this is your invitation to start thinking about how you can personalize your online course. Um, we don't call you just a facilitator. We want you to we want you to see yourself as an integral part of the learning community and the learning environment and the students learning experience. So you probably already do a lot of things that engage students in the online environment, like replying in discussion forums, offering personalized grading feedback, posting your weekly announcements. Um, and we invite you to personalize the course with your own personality, experience, and expertise. And of course, Canvas Studio can be used by our on-campus faculty and our online faculty. Um, so today, what I'm talking about is really uh, global and can be applied um, regardless of your modality that you teach in. Today, though, specifically, we're going to focus specifically on announcements and discussions and, and how Studio can play a role in that. So one way you can personalize your course 
and add in an element of student to teacher interaction within the LMS is by adding announcements and discussions using Studio. And Studio, as you probably know, is the embedded Canvas tool for recording um, and also uploading uh, existing videos to share with your students. So I wanna talk just a little bit um, specifically to our online faculty for just a moment. Um, and it's this concept of the mini lecture video. So currently there is no lecturing in an online course um, and we don't require our students to attend uh, a lecture online if they're enrolled in a purely online course. Um, but there are ways that you can add your voice and your expertise to the online learning environment. And that can be either in discussions or announcements, the concept of this mini lecture video. And this is where you bring in your, ex, uh, your experience, your expertise, share your own story. It might even be um, your story about your time in the field and working um, in the real world, as we like to say, um, within these elements. Uh, it might be you already have taught this course lots of times and you can anticipate student questions that will come up. So maybe you have a video on commonly asked questions in a particular module. Um, maybe there are some really tough concepts that you know students may struggle with or you've seen students struggle with in the past. That might be an opportunity to create a, a real uh, short mini uh, lecture video. And when we say mini, um, you guys know all the data on student, re student uh, attention spans, and we wanna keep those short at about five minutes or less. Um, if you find that there are concepts that are going to take more than five minutes, you might consider chunking them into smaller bite-sized videos. So if there's like a three points you want to make, but it's going to take you 10 minutes or 15 minutes, maybe make one small video on each. And that really is convenient for the student to go back. Maybe they understood the first point and the last point, but they didn't quite get the middle point. That enables them to watch just that short video um, that was the, your second point without needing to review the entire thing. Now, if you are a, an on-campus faculty member, and let's say you've heard of this concept of flipping your classroom where students are reading and watching a lecture outside of class, and you want them to come to class ready to work or ready for a class activity, this is where you can build in some mini lectures for your students through Studio or you have a guest speaker and you upload the video into Canvas Studio um, or you have found videos out there that exist that could serve as sort of a primer lecture for your material for that day and you're having them watch that before they come to class. Uh, the next piece is uh, maybe a wrap up video and, or an intro video and this can be used by both on campus and online faculty. Um, this could be little things like helpful tips, uh, encouragement, reminders, recommendations, an overview of upcoming tasks, what to expect for a week, or what to expect on a project that's coming up. Even your real world experiences and, um, you know, offer a prayer to start your week or offer a prayer to end your week. Um, and of course, we can do these things through typed out announcements. Right, and we do that. But when you add your face and your voice and your, uh, you know, they can see the human behind the words. They, they know it's a person on the other side of the screen, specifically for online classes where they're not meeting you in person. That just them seeing your face and hearing your voice adds such a, a more rich element to that teacher to student interaction and it really helps them get to know you. And you can say things in a way that you can't type them in the way you, you want them to come across. You're hoping students are sensing your enthusiasm or your encouragement, but if they can actually see you and hear you, that makes a big difference. 
The other type of video that you can take advantage of are what we call curated videos. So these are videos that already exist. They're, they live out there. They're open ed resources or they're, they live on YouTube or Vimeo or you have a uh, recording saved to your computer that you would really like to somehow get into the online environment um, within the LMS so students can view that before class, after class, or part of their um, weekly preparation. And you can actually bring those videos into studio. So you might bring in videos, um, you're bringing in expert voices, diverse voices, voices with alternative perspectives. Um, maybe you are a female faculty member, but you want to have a, a male voice come in as well. Maybe there's um, a cultural element to what you're teaching and you want to bring in sources that can help to speak to that. Um, you might think about scenarios or cases or real world situations and examples. And yes, you can send students with a link to YouTube or to Vimeo or place a raw file into your classroom. But when you add it to Studio, you get the added benefit of the course level analytics. And what I mean by that is you can actually look at that data and see how many students watched the video, how many students watched the whole thing or where students started to drop off. You know, maybe you have a 20 minute thing you want students to watch and you're realizing 95% of my students watch the first five minutes or 10 minutes and they shut it off. So, Okay, now how can we chunk that video to make it more palatable for students in smaller bites? So those are some of the ideas I have for using video within the classroom, within the LMS. And uh, again, this applies to our on-campus faculty and our online faculty as well. And everyone has access to studio. So we're gonna take a look under the hood, so to speak. And we're going to look at, um, I, I go into courses frequently to help faculty with things. And I do see that many faculty aren't taking advantage of the organization structure within Canvas Studio. And when you've taught for a long time, which many of you have, and you have 50, 75 videos living in Canvas Studio. Um, it's really difficult to find what you needed to find so that you could share it with a new group of students. So I'm going to talk about naming conventions and uh, collections. Um, I'm also going to show how to change, it's super quick, how to change a thumbnail on a video. And that's just um, sort of um, uh, looks of your video. Um, I'll just real briefly walk through record and um, a couple tools in there that you might not know exist. Um, I'll show you or I'll talk about how to edit a, an existing video that you have in already in studio. Um, and I'll show you how to upload or curate a video, bring something in from outside, and then of course sharing and embedding. So I'm going to get my Zoom tools here and stop sharing. Thank you for your patience as I try to find all my tools here. So stop share. Okay. Then I have somewhere, here we are. And let me share again. These little screens are tough to work with here. Share screen. Share over here. Okay, so now you should see my um, my Canvas dashboard. I'm gonna put some notes over here for myself. So first, I'm gonna show you. Um, well, first, let's talk about navigation because that can confuse. Um, people, and I know I was certainly confused. When, when you're in a course, you have um, two studio buttons, right? So you have your 
studio here that lives in this burgundy or crimson bar on the side. And then you also have studio here within the course. So this is your global navigation and this is your course navigation. And I want to heavily recommend that whenever you are creating a video or uploading, curating something that you start at the organization level. You can access it later in your course. There's no problem with that, but there can be some problems with getting things that you created at the course level over to the org level so it's accessible everywhere. So I would just always recommend starting in the Burgundy Bar under Studio. So I'm gonna go there. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show is this concept of organization within Canvas Studio. Um, I guess just by a show of hands, I've got some of you in here. Um, raise your hand if you feel like I've got the organization down, I'm good to go. And raise your hand if you feel like I'm always searching for that video from way back when and I can't seem to find it. I can't remember what I called it. Okay. That was me for sure. Um, and I work, I work really quickly when I do things. So sometimes I like, I don't think about things when I name it, but to prepare for this, I really like got down into the weeds of how things should actually probably be um, named. So Canvas Studio has this concept of collections. So if you think about a filing system, you might have a, um, a drawer or a collection of things for a certain class or a certain topic. So I can create collections and place videos within that collection. Um, I can also just have standalone videos in here as well. So a recommendation I have for you is when you create a collection, name it with a naming convention of collection, colon, and then the name of that collection. So I have a collection of training videos. I have a collection of general student announcement videos. Those aren't really course specific. It's just kind of like what those things I find myself telling my students every term that I just want to keep those separate. I have a collection of uh, videos for, for a course. Um, I have a collection for March, so a couple of March mindfulness that ended up in my studio a collection for another course. And then these are not collections. They're my OLC3143. These are just two videos I have just kind of hanging around out here. I need to add them to a collection, okay? Um, I have another one over here called Link to Faculty Profile. Um, I only have one of those videos and um, I actually put it on YouTube so I could probably delete it from here, but I'm keeping it just I don't have a collection to add that to, but you can see this is one thumbnail. Um, this training video collection, I have three thumbnails, so you can tell it's a collection. But that name collection at the beginning of your collection, I'll show you why that's important here in a second. So I'm just gonna add a collection and I'm gonna name it and I'm gonna call it, um, collection. and my class name, and I'm gonna create, okay? So now I have nothing there yet, of course. Now I can add videos here um, and search to find them, but I'm just gonna go back to my library so that you can see when you have a video that lands in here and it doesn't belong to a collection, how to do that. So you're just gonna click the three dots. I'm on my OLC 3143 January welcome. And I'm just going to move to, and this is where that naming convention is really handy. Because I put collection at the beginning of that, all of my collections are together in my alpha order here. So I'm just going to go down to collection OLC 3143 and move it. And now that video lives in my collection. And then I'm going to add this one as well. Move two. Now I could, I'll go all the way to the bottom here. I could add a new collection from this area. So if I hadn't 
if I got in here and realized, oh, I didn't start my collection yet, I could do it there. But I have started my collection, so I'm just gonna move that in. Okay, now that is very handy because I'm at the global um, studio area. If I go into, let's say I do go into o OLC 3143 and I wanna pull a video that I um, posted in a class last semester, I can easily go to that collection, find that video that I want and go from there. So that's how you move things to collections. Any questions about collections or moving? All right. The next thing I wanna do is show how to change a thumbnail. So I'm gonna go into this collection here, my IDT 5113. And um, I don't really like that thumbnail that it put there. Um, I look like I'm mid word or mid sentence. So I just want to um, make, I want to add a thumbnail. Now, this comes in handy for two reasons. One, aesthetics. It looks more attractive when there's a nice um, thumbnail. But also, if you do your thumbnails right, it's even easier to find the videos that you're looking for. So um, while I'm here, before I change my thumbnail, I do want to point out, I always put the course number as part of my title. I do see a lot of people don't do that. Um, so if you teach you know, five classes one semester and you have like five week one videos, Ugh. you know, how do you tell those apart? So that's another recommendation I have for your naming convention. So super easy. I'm just going to click my three dots here next to um, the name. I don't even need to go into my video and I'm just going to click replace thumbnail. And I think you'll see my screen pop up and let's just say I want to add, um, I don't know, let's say I want to add that and let's say it's a week four. It's not the correct thumbnail, but I'm not going to take time to search for the right one. So that just shows you how to how to switch the thumbnail, right? So just those three dots, replace thumbnail, and you just browse to find what you want and change it right out. Super simple. So I don't know if you have a theme for each of your courses or a color or, you know, you put, you have, um, I just made that in PowerPoint. I mean, and I just typed the um, some of mine I, I do in PowerPoint. So this one, I actually uploaded a picture of myself and put a little bar with the name. I would probably change that at this point, but that's um, how you change a thumbnail. Okay, the other thing you can do that's that's pretty clever is to, you can annotate videos. And I think I have, some annotations already in, I believe it was this one. So an annotation is simply a way for you to bring a video in from somewhere else or create your own video. So let's say you do a mini lecture or you, you had a guest speaker and um, a class discussion around that, but you want to somehow archive that and prompt student thinking along the watch. So as they watch it, you can prompt them to think about certain things or add additional information that might be helpful. So um, I have an anna two annotations here. And um, let's see, I'm just gonna click the three dots. No, oh boy, how did I do my annotations? Let's go back. Okay, so I need to click my three dots here on this screen, and I'm just going to click annotate video. And this takes me into um, a new area and I have, a, I still have my play button, I have a plus button, and then every time I add an annotation, it's going to add it to the timestamp. So I'll show you one, for example. So it's going to get to that part 
And let's just say I was having the students, I was explaining to the students that they're to pick a client for their project and send it over to me. And I'm afraid some students are going to miss that. Maybe they've zoned out for a second. And I've just added, let me know, email your choice to me this week. And then it just requires the student to click continue to then continue through the video. And I have another example here. So let's say I was giving, uh, I had a video with for faculty training and I just prompt need support for this task and I offer a link. So when students click that link, it opens up for them and they can go to that site. Or maybe I'm talking about a specific uh, website that healthcare professionals use in the field, like every day they're on this site. And I don't wanna only talk about it, I want my students to open that site while they're watching the video and kind of tour it with me um, so they could click that as well. So I'm gonna go down here and I'll just, I, you see my little plus went away. So I'm gonna click pause and I'm gonna add an annotation and I can give it a headline. This is the larger type you saw. I can say stop and reflect. What would you say your top three um, customer? Let's see. What would you say your top three customer service strategies would be? Uh, this is where I can also add a link if I wanted to. So the display text is what the link would say. And the link is actually where do I want students to, um, to go. And that's what my annotation will look like. So when they get to that spot, it will stop and then continue. I could also have some questions in there, right? Maybe uh, some questions I want them to answer for their homework and um, turn in when they come to class. That's a great um, interaction piece that you can build into your videos. If you have a video, let's say every semester you want your students to watch a particular set of videos and then uh, one video each week and then you come into class and you discuss it and students are really like they're not engaging in the discussion in class and you're guessing it's probably because they didn't watch all of the video. Um, if you build in those stop points and actually have them while you're watching this video tonight before you come to class next answer those questions and bring those in because that's going to start our discussion. So that's a good way to add in some interaction. Um, if it's an online course, purely online, and you're simply bringing in a, a video of an expert voice, and you just want to prompt students to, to think about things um, at various places, or you want to add your own insights to that video, annotations are a good way to do that. So I'm going to show real just a few quick options about recording. Um, but first, are there any questions about annotating videos or changing a thumbnail? Okay, great. So remember, I'm in the, the burgundy bar here in my studio at the global level, and I'm just going to click uh, record. And I have two options here, a screen capture or a webcam capture, and I can change that at another step forward if I change my mind. But let's say I'm going to do a screen capture. Um, now, if you're on a Mac, there may be some things that don't work quite right. That means Mac, Apple products um, really lock down the microphone and the camera. Um, so you need to make sure that your computer is set up. Uh, oh, I waited too long here. Your um, computer is set up to allow studio specifically to use your webcam and microphone. I'm going to do a screen capture here. Okay, I've got it. So, so now I have this um, dynamic box that I can 
drag around and capture all or parts of my screen, depending on what I want students to say or see. Sometimes I keep the URL out, depending on what I'm um, doing with my video. Sometimes I'll, I'll just show the whole screen and I can see everything. So that's just going to show you exactly what will be captured within your video. The other piece that you can see here is this little grayed out box in the lower right hand corner. And that's um, where your thumbnail video will display when students watch the playback. Um, and that those are the options. So you have full screen option, uh, lower right corner or no thumbnail at all. So that's where you could shut that off if you wanted to. So I can have screen, only webcam and no screen or both. So I'm gonna do both. Um, this size, if I know the pixel size I wanna capture, I could put it in there, but it's much easier just to drag this guy around and, and change it with the dynamic box. Okay, a couple pieces here. This narration, that's my voice speaking into the microphone. If I'm not showing a video or playing any media during my recording, I don't need to have my computer audio turned on. But there are times where I may want to, I have a video embedded into what I'm presenting and I want them to hear both my voice and the sound that's coming from my computer. I would need to turn that on. So yes or no. Right now, I'll leave it off. Okay. And then um, there are other preferences. They're, they're pretty generic and I don't mess around with those too much. It's more like internal settings for studio. So I'm gonna hit record and it's gonna count me down. And most of you guys are familiar with this, but I wanna show you a little tool that you might not be aware of. And that's this pencil here. Um, when I click the pencil, it's going to allow me some options. So I can freehand, let's say I really wanted to point out this um, Bill and Ted video because I'm, I'm pointing students right to that. Don't forget to watch this video. I can erase it. I can um, point to things. I really love to drink coffee. Um, you know, you're, you're making this to your, uh, specific to your content, but I'm just kind of showcasing some of these options. Um, I might have a box where I, as I'm talking and I wanna bring students attention to, don't forget to select the date added if you know that. Um, now, if you draw a few things on and then you hit erase, it will erase everything. And as I'm recording, those annotations on the screen are being captured as well. Okay, then to stop, I'm just gonna click the pause button and uh, click done. And now I can give it a title. I wanna give it a good title, descriptive title with probably my course name and uh, maybe a description. And from here, I can trim off parts of my video. I can trim off part of the beginning or the end if I wanted. You can't split a video or, or um, cut out the, the middle piece from this screen. Um, there are ways to do that, but it's, there's quite a bit of workarounds to do that. So here it's just very basic editing. Now, if I wanted to edit a little bit more detail here, I can click edit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I have quite a few options here and maybe I should make this a little bigger for you guys. So this is the video that I captured and I have some tools down here in the time bar. And when you click that, you'll see that I can cut, copy, hide, insert, narrate, overlay, replace, change my sound. I could add music or a sound effect. I could change the speed. I could add some transitions and I can work with the volume levels. I can also, um, this, uh, depending on 
what you're doing, this little blur might also come in handy. That's, this just shows what I used last. And for me, um, the last time I created a video, I blurred out part of the screen to hide um, student names and student numbers because I, it was a video I was putting on YouTube and I didn't want that um, information to show. So I blurred that out, but that is found, I believe under overlay, you can blur out. Um, so you can do all kinds of overlays. You could do a highlight, a text box, you could overlay a video. So lots of different options here. I could hide my cursor or hide my webcam at certain points. Um, so a lot of things you could do here. And I would just recommend if you're really like using uh, Canvas Studio for very specific tasks, even outside of teaching, your actual teaching tasks, this might be something that you want to dig into a little bit. Um, and then I can also, uh, I didn't have webcam because I, I never turned that on, but um, I could have cursor, I show my cursor or not and add narration. Okay. Any questions about um, this part that I just talked about recording and editing videos? Okay, um, we are asked frequently how I have a video that I used last semester, but the first few minutes talks about the that actual semester and they don't want their new semester students to be confused by that part being in the video but the second half was um really great and it would be hard to recapture that in a way so i really want to edit out an existing canvas studio and the short answer to that is you can't do that but the longer answer is you can do that but it's quite a workaround. Um, now, if you're interested in that, it would be better for me to share an actual video. It's a very well done video, the best one I've found, showing exactly how to do that. And so if you're interested, let me know, email me and I'll email you that link to that YouTube video. Because it is, it's a, it's a multi-step process, but essentially what you're doing is you're downloading your Canvas Studio video to your desktop, then you can't get into the editing screen anywhere unless you've just captured a video. So you're going to just capture, do a record screen capture and capture just like three seconds of anything. It doesn't even matter because you're gonna cut that part out later. So once you are in that place where it says, give it a title, give it a description and you can edit, then you click edit. And now you're going to use those little tools I showed you to import your Canvas Studio video that you had saved to your desktop. So now you have two videos living in one recording, and then you can trim off that, all the parts at the beginning that you didn't, and you can trim off that like extra video that you recorded. So like I said, it's pretty complex, but once you see it in action, it's super easy to do. So that is all about editing um, videos that already exist in Canvas. Uh, the next thing I want to show is how to upload a video that lives um, somewhere else. So I'm going to, um, okay, so I'm going to click add in my upper uh, right hand corner. And it gives me a couple options. I might have something on my desktop or um, saved to my Google Drive that I want to bring in, and I can do that. I can also paste a link right in, and I captured something. I have a something pasted over here. This is from YouTube, and I just simply found my video on YouTube. You could do the same thing on Vimeo. Use the little share icon, copy your link, and then add your video. Now, like I said um, before, yeah, I could send students right to YouTube, that would be fine, but I miss out on all those analytics. 
So in order to see the analytics on a video, and let's just pick one, um, I'll, I'll pick one out of my ED7723 class. I had a couple of videos that I uploaded there for course announcements um, on weeks where they had um, quite a bit of their project pieces going on. So I can't view the analytics for that course until I go into the course. So I'm gonna go into the course and go to my courses, all courses. I'll go in the course. And now when I go to studio, so I'm inside my course, I'm clicking the studio navigation in my course. And I will see that video um, that I had uploaded because I embedded it into an announcement. So when I click view, my video is here, my nice thumbnail. And when I go to insights, I see I had eight views. Um, time view, now this is not a 34 minute video. This is like a three minute video, <laughs> but eight viewers total, it added up to 37 minutes. So. I'm not, I don't teach math for a reason. So I'm not gonna do the math on like how, how long each student watched. But now I can see um, I had six viewers here. And then at the four minute mark, I lost someone's attention and that they dropped off. And then at the 520, I was getting really long winded and I lost two students. Um, so that's unique viewers. Um, I can also see the number of plays at each minute mark. But then what's really cool is I can come down here and I see all these students reviewed my announcement. So I'm getting an email from Sandy. And Sandy says, Dr. Lease, I'm so confused about this assignment. I have no idea what you're asking me to do. And I say, Sandy, did you watch the video I put in the course announcement? And she says, oh yeah, I think I watched that. And I, I can say, well, Sandy, I see you watched my week one video. I would recommend watching my week three video because I answer a lot of the questions you're probably gonna have. So um, watch that quick three minute video and then let me know what questions you have. Cause I can see Sandy didn't watch it, right? She didn't even click on it. So, um, and then I can see that I had, uh, these are my students that dropped off um, probably at the four minute mark and the five minute and 20 second mark. That is one of the benefits of bringing in your um, outside videos in, you can get all of those course analytics, which is pretty cool. Okay, then I want to show, um, we do get this question occasionally when you embed a video and you don't want students to comment on it and students are commenting on it. Let's, let's say it's an announcement video and you just really want students to see the video and you don't want like the big text box that offers all the comments. Um, you just want it cleaner. So I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to my announcements and let's just add an announcement. So this is how you would embed a video. Um, you have this little, oh, let me give it a title. And I've got this little plugin icon, and that's where I'm going to access my Canvas Studio. And now I have really nicely organized my collections. I have names, I can see exactly where I'm going. Let's say I wanted something for my IDT class. So I'm gonna view that and I'm gonna pull in um, this video about this. Uh, framework. Now, if you don't want students to see all the options of commenting, you want to turn off the media tab and that will make it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to add it with them just so you can see what that looks like.
So now when students come in and they see my announcement, they'll see the video and underneath they'll see, um, I believe they see comments. I'm not sure they see the other two items or the other three items, they'll just see the comment feature. Um, so, you know, that's a lot to put in an announcement and you don't want to confuse students like, did you want me to reply to this? Is it a requirement? So I'm just going to turn that off. And um, is there a way to turn that off without going back in? Yes, right here. So I'm going to just click the gear icon and turn off comments. I believe, well, let me save it, see what happens. And I don't think that did it. Nope, that didn't do it. So I'm going to edit my course announcement. And I'm just going to delete that video and I'll add it back in. And I'm going to turn off display media tabs. And now it's just a nice video. And I can, of course, resize it if I want. Um, I believe. Maybe it won't let me with videos. I think it's a mouse issue here. Oops. But anyway, you see now that they don't see those options to comment. Mm. And I am in a course where I have the new I have a new tool turned on in this course, so it may be, it will look different than it looks for you. There is a reply button there. Um, and that's an announce, a new announcement feature they're gonna be rolling out, so ignore that, please. Um, that will be coming later. Okay, so that is how you share, um, embed, and turn on and off comments. And I think, um, let's see, oh, captions, right? So let me go into Studio again, and I'll show you how to add captions to a video that you've put in here. And trying to think of one that I've not, oh, well, I know I didn't turn it on this one. I just added this one. So um, I'm gonna click to go into the video. Again, I'm at the Global Navigation Studio. I clicked on the video and I'm going to add captions. So I want students to be able to see the captions while they watch it back. And there's a couple different ways I can do that. So I have captions and I can, um, it must still be processing this video. Let me find another one. It's a little shorter and has been in here already. Okay, so here I, when I click on captions, I have the option of selecting the language. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete the captions. Okay, so this is how it will look when you come in and you haven't added captions yet. You'll say which language is spoken and I'm gonna say English and then I'm just gonna click request and it's that easy. So now Canvas Studio is going to go through my video and pull captions for me. And then I can review and publish them. And I might come in here and like edit. I might capitalize that and make that a number instead. Um, I might add some punctuation or if it like put something on a line by itself in a weird way, I might clean that up. Um, just real quick. And if you have longer videos, of course, that's gonna take you a long time. So another reason to just have shorter videos. Um, you can also down or upload 
um, captions. Like let's say you pull this from YouTube or Vimeo and captions were offered by the creator of the video and they lived um, in, you could just copy those and paste them into a notepad and then you could add them in um, here so you can upload a file as well. Okay, so any questions about, um, we've talked about organizing, creating collections, thumbnails, annotations, uh, recording, uploading, editing, captions, curating, embedding. Are there any questions that I didn't answer for you? Right. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, this video will be available to rewatch if you want to walk through any of those steps. Um, as always, if you need anything at all, we have an excellent website. It's snufacultysupport.com. That's one that I would recommend that you bookmark. And of course, you can always email, reach out directly to me if you have specific questions about Canvas Studio or um, anything else. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you.